Hi everyone, welcome to our channel Capsule. The topic of discussion is Pre-Formulation Studies Part 1. This is in association with my previous video on Pre-Formulation Studies. If you are visiting our channel for the first time, make sure you have subscribed it and hit the bell icon for regular updates. So let's start with the introduction. In Part 1 of the Pre-Formulation Study, general parameters of the drugs and their compatibility with other drugs and ingredients are covered. When we talk about the general properties of the drugs, the knowledge about their molecular weight and formula is very important. The molecular weight and formula of the drug can be confirmed with the help of a search engine that is Pupkin compounds. These parameters can also be found on delivered bottles and packaging labels. Further, the color, order and test are checked on the basis of sensorial evaluations. Color of the drug can be observed by visual inspection and order of the drug are checked by smelling and test is checked by keeping a pinch of drug on tongue for a while. At the same time, the test checking is recommended only when the drug is meant for oral or buccal delivery to avoid any biological toxicity of the drug. After sensorial evaluation, the next point of discussion is the melting point determination. The melting point is checked for a drug which is in solid state. It is one of the characteristic features of the drugs. It can be measured by capillary method and in this method liquid paraffin or sulfuric acid is used because they boil at very high temperature that is 370 degrees Celsius and 337 degrees Celsius respectively. One of these liquids can be taken in a beaker and kept on a heating plate. Now, we can start heating and stirring of the weaker content slowly at 50 revolution per minute. Further, we can fix a thermometer and drug loaded closed end capillary into the maintained beaker. Now wait for the rise of temperature of the drug up to melting point and when drugs start melting note down the temperature range in which melting starts and ends. Now the same procedure can be used for the determination of melting point by Thalley tube method. The liquid paraffin or sulfuric acid filled triangular safe Thalley tube is fixed over the flame with thermometer. Further, the drug loaded closed and capillary is fixed into the Thalley tube. We can now wait for the rise of temperature up to the melting point of the drug. And finally, when the drug starts melting, note down the temperature range in which melting starts and ends. This is how the melting point of the drug is determined. Now, the next point is compatibility studies. These investigations are very important to know about the drug's compatibility with the other drugs or excipients for the development of new formulation. It ensures the safety stability of the drugs in the formulation. Compatibility of the drug to drug and drug to the excipient can be checked in terms of physical and chemical interactions. The study of the physical interaction of the drug with another drug or excipient can be done with the help of Fourier transform, infrared spectroscopy and differential scanning calorimetry. Where FTIR study of the drug is done to know the types of functional group present in it, it helps identify the unknown samples, determine quality and consistency of the sample, amount of component in a mixture and presence of any physical or chemical interaction in a blend. 
both solid as well as liquid samples of the drug are used to determine this spectra. For the same purpose, drug and KBR are used in 1 is to 99 and 2 is to 98 ratio and mixed well with the help of agate pistol and mortar. This mixture is then converted to the thin pallet using hydraulic pressure piston and used for the investigation. Spectra of the drugs gave information in terms of OH stretching, CC stretching, CO stretching, CH stretching, CH bending, OH bending and so on. If we may take a typical example of any drug, a digital FTIR spectra looks like this. X axis denotes wave number and Y axis denotes transmittance. If we take example of isopropyl alcohol, it contains 3 carbon units with 8 hydrogens and 1 carbon. This spectra contains various characteristic stretching and bending peaks based on which all the function groups of isopropyl alcohol are identified. In the presence of any other drug or ingredient, these characteristic peaks of isopropyl alcohol can be shifted or broadened up to some or large extent. This may be due to the occurrence of any physical or chemical modification in its structure. Therefore, this study may provide information about how much the used ingredients are compatible with each other while developing formulation. Here are some suitable links from where you can get the list of stretching and bending ranges of different functional groups. You can watch our video on role of FDI in drug identification and compatibility studies also. Differential scanning calorimetry or DSA is another instrumental method that is used to study the interaction of drugs with the drugs or excipients. Like FTR analysis, it is also a thermal analysis technique. In order to prepare the polymeric products, one should have the knowledge of thermal behaviors of the drug and its compatibility with the other excipients. This technique is based on the principle that how much amount of thermal energy can be absorbed or released by any drug upon heating and cooling. Heating leads to the change of drug phases in one or more than one based on their nature. Solid sample absorbs heat and melts however liquid samples releases heat and solidifies. The amount of heat absorbed or released by any drug sample before melting or solidifying is known as heat capacity of that particular sample. The release of the heat is exothermic process while heat absorption is the endothermic process. Based on the exo or endothermic processes, solid samples are analyzed by heat cool reheat method that means heat from room temperature to the final temperature followed by maintaining the isotherm for 3 minutes. Heating cycle is followed by cooling cycle that is from final temperature to the room temperature. Finally, the reheat cycle from room temperature to final temperature. Selecting experimental conditions for this method is very crucial because slight change in the conditions may lead to the false results. If the sample is pure, its 6 to 8 mg is sufficient for the analysis. However, for mixture or blends, 8 to 10 mg sample is recommended. The start temperature should be less than the glass transition temperature and end temperature should be less than the degradation temperature. The heating rate should be 5 to 20 degrees Celsius and cooling rate should be maintained at 5 to 10 degrees Celsius. 
these conditions will lead to this THC thermogram of the drug where the x axis of this graph depicts temperature increment and y axis depicts heat flow there are three types of graphs can be obtained depending upon the nature of the samples first curve in heating phase is glass transition temperature which gives data in range that is from onset temperature to the final temperature second peak in heating phase is endothermic peak where melting point of the drug is obtained in this curve onset and final point is very close that's why a sharp melting point is observed the third peak in cooling cycle is exothermic phase it is also known as crystallization peak tg or glass transition can be seen only in the case of amorphous drugs crystalline drugs may have two peaks that is melting and crystallization however semi crystalline drugs may have three peaks that is glass transition melting and crystallization in the presence of any other drug or ingredient this characteristic glass transition melting or crystallization peak may be shifted or broadened up to some or large extent this may be due to the occurrence of any modification in drug surface or structure therefore this study may provide information about how much the used ingredients are compatible with each other while developing any formulation this is how we can determine the physical compatibility study of the drug when we talk about the chemical compatibility study it can be done using compatibility chart designed by various api based industries one of the typical chemical compatibility charts is depicted here we can see 24 particle groups and their possible interaction with one another the same 24 groups are also presented diagonally anyone can find easily that which group will form safe or unsafe combination with other group where x depicts the formation of unsafe combination and zero depicts the formation of safe combination with other group please check the description box for the detailed description of each group at last it is recommended that one should definitely carry out this investigation while performing pre formulation studies of any new drug this investigation will help you out with the correct combination to proceed with before developing any new formulation now the next table will tell you about the types of plastic which are resistant unsuitable or toxic when used with the given types of chemical groups all the information related to the resistance swellable nature limited resistance environmental stress and maximum wearable concentration of the drug that should be stored in the plastic can be obtained by this table this is all about the general properties and compatibility issues of the drug which should be investigated before proceeding for the process of formulation development please go through our next videos for micromeritic properties solubilization effect and chemical properties of the drug thanks for watching